Hi guys, um, this is Claire Matara speaking to you from the Amazon in Peru uh, where I have a small ayahuasca center and uh, I wanted to talk about um, my master actually uh, Mehababa I've followed him for about 45 years um, I'm now 71 and um, uh, I'm wanting to talk about the end of the Kali Yuga. Um, I was looking up the Kali Yuga and it seems that there is a lot of different interpretations of when it starts, when it's finishing, how long it is. Some say a few thousand years, some say no, not. Some they say a huge amount of time. And uh, the Kali Yuga is basically um, one of the four Yugas that the Vedas talk about, the Indian Vedas. And uh, the Kali Yuga is supposed to be the, the longest and the hardest and uh, the time when everyone's suffering and having wars and fight a lot. Um, Mehbaba said that uh, uh, it's not all bad news because during the uh, Kali Yuga the people are more likely to um, look for God and look for um, realization of God. They can gain the realization of God through all the struggles they go through. So. Uh, it's also a very uh, useful time even though you know we don't like to suffer and we don't like to see other people suffer at least I don't <laughs> and um, so it's it's actually a very special time but uh, Meher Baba said that he came in at the end of a cycle of cycles and uh, I presume since he said that the Kali Yuga is the last one before they go into the um, the higher one which is a, such a uh, cycle. Um, we are, also everybody's talking about the um, ascension, and the ascension is basically the idea that we rise our frequency and we go to a higher level of consciousness. So we go from a lower level to a higher level of consciousness. And um, how can this be achieved? And uh, what does this involve? So um, we are talking about um, basically not only. Um, a very uh, evil scheme that people are making us suffer and everything's kind of set up to make it really bad. No, we're also talking about an, a great natural flow of the universe to go to a higher level again of consciousness. And when you go to a higher level, the old level um, becomes outdated and it becomes um, brittle and falls apart. So in a way, what's going on is that the old is falling apart and um, we are having to get ready for the new. We can't hold on to the past because it's making it much more difficult to go into the future. And the more we hold on, the more we suffer actually. So the more we hold on to what used to be normal, um, the more we find that we end up suffering. Uh, that's why a lot of people uh, suggest meditation uh, for this time of the of the lockdowns because it's a time where we can actually um, go uh, focus on our higher self and bring the higher frequencies into our body so that we actually uh, suffer a lot less from the whole experience. Uh, the other thing I want to also say that the, uh, the, the what we call the dark side has not cut power over people who have a higher frequency. So the frequency is very important for us. Um, so the more we work with this ascension idea, the more we, we kind of create a much better world and, and we are getting access to a better world. Um, so yeah, there's different mm, mm, ways of having meditations. Uh, there are meditations online that you can listen to while you're relaxing and um, you'll find that you'll get something good uh, if you really look for it. There's quite a lot of uh, smorgasbord of meditations available in different groups. Um, I, I actually have worked a little bit with Aaron Doughty. I found that quite nice for me. It helped me a lot, some of his meditations. Um, but I'm sure that there's lots of other ones. Meher Baba doesn't actually give a particular meditation apart from uh, focusing on his photo and saying his name. And um, that can be, of course, uh, for anybody who wants to do that. We all, uh, we can only work with the kind of um, equipment that we have. Uh, I find that certain meditations make me so bored, um, it doesn't help me. Um, so I found that actually meditating uh, while I'm drawing or while I'm doing some 
um, handwork, like making my uh, <laughs> necklaces and, and earrings. It helps me to uh, also let go of the past and move into a higher frequency. Um, the other thing that uh, I found the ayahuasca is very good for, it is very good for cleaning up old trauma and um, it's basically like a psychic soap. Uh, it helps you to clean off old um, problems, resentments, fears um, that actually stop you from moving into a higher frequency. And uh, it can also, uh, it's a way of recreating the past over and over again, like people who've had uh, severe uh, trauma of maybe sexual abuse or uh, physical abuse or um, a war that they had to kill people, uh, any of that can sort of, uh, it kind of sticks into our, into our mind and can sort of start repeating itself at times when we don't really want to. And it also creates um, a kind of a, a framework where we kind of project it on the world around us and we sort of find ourselves reliving similar scenarios like being attracted to the same abusive husbands or the same um, abusive situations in the workforce or whatever. Uh, so um, there's different ways of getting rid of this, uh, these old um, imprints, these old patterns that uh, leave us with a psychological and emotional trauma. Um, and I'm not going to say that one is particularly much better than, my, than another. Uh, I think that the ayahuasca work is very helpful for the people who feel okay about doing that and who have access to it. Um, uh, I don't really believe that marijuana does it a lot um, because marijuana actually um, brings down your energy so that you don't feel the same pain uh, and that doesn't actually make a solution for it so that after a while you might find it will bring it back up. And, uh, and sometimes that has to do with illnesses um, uh, that seem to be repeating on us, like certain rashes or certain um, cancers or, or different things that happen to us. Um, that all has to do with, uh, according to my understanding, that has to do with emotional trauma of some sort and hanging on to these, these things. It's not that we want to hang on to them, but we hang on to them unconsciously and uh, that's because they were so kind of imprinted at a moment when we felt really weak or we couldn't actually process it very well. So um, that's what it is. It's about processing and letting go and uh, cleaning out the cupboards and you can do it in any way that, um, that suits you. Like for instance, if you, um, if you are wanting to make a big trip or you want to move house to a better place, for instance, uh, you might like to clean up your cupboards. You might like to um, study a language that is actually way, way the, for the place that you're going to. So any of these things will actually help you. Physical things will also help you. Um, cleaning up cupboards, um, cleaning your house, any of those things are very, very helpful in letting go of the past and making yourself ready to receive the new energies. So um, I hope that this is a little food for thought for the moment and uh, in time we'll get back to a little bit more uh, deeper information. Okay, thank you for listening and uh, please subscribe and put your, push the like button if you think that this was helpful. All right, lots of love, all the best for now. Bye-bye.